We are on our way to Jat Yerpa Caves, and uh, this is about an hour drive from Lhasa City. This is the last full day in Lhasa we have here on April 8th, and uh, it's just a beautiful day. These meditation caves we're making our way to are actually the places where uh, famous monks and lamas, including Songsen Gompo and Guru Rinpoche, have meditated. So most of the great Buddhist masters who founded monasteries here in Lhasa which we were looking right over the city of Lhasa there. They, uh, this is the meditation cave area for those monks. Here on this high pass, about 3,800 meters, just overlooking Lhasa. A lot of people ask me as we're traveling through Lhasa, Tibet, about these white ladders. These are painted all over the rocks uh, within you know, 100, 200 miles of Lhasa. So many of the rocks have all these white ladders. And it's a symbol of kind of working your way up towards heaven through good karma or good merit. Uh, so kind of climbing the ladder of merit, merit towards the teachings of the Buddha. Monastery, you can see these meditation caves behind me. There's supposedly 108 meditation caves here. There's 108 teachings of the Buddha. And uh, the main caves have a little temple that's been built around the cave. And uh, we're standing here at these stupas, huge stupas. They're probably uh, at least 20 meters tall, looking over the whole valley. So the first thing you come to as soon as you start walking up into the caves are these ladies selling incense and butter. These are all offerings that you can offer up at the temples on the higher mountain. Uh, a uh, little thing of incense, about 10 kwai. You pour it into a kind of a, a burning, cindering pile as an offering and it's uh, considered an offering to the Buddha. COVID lockdowns were the very first tourists here, three years. So these people are very, very excited to sell some offerings. You can see behind me in these cliffs are the, the caves that have kind of been formalized into each has become a little small temple.
Seated at 4,400 meters, this is a high cave complex, a monastery that used to hold over 300 monks. There are a number of small temple shrines and hermitage caves along the cliffs, and these contain some of the earliest known meditation sites in all of Tibet, some dating back to even before Buddhist times. Jayurpa Monastery became one of the three most important centers of meditation and retreat in all of central Tibet. Among the shrines and hermitages, the most famous ones are those traditionally connected with Songtsen Gampo. Songtsen Gampo was the 33rd king of the Yarlung dynasty and the first emperor over a unified Tibet who gave Tibet a unified language. Songtsen Gampo was influenced by his Buddhist wives Princess Wencheng from China, and Princess Brikuti from Nepal, who brought Buddhism to Tibet as it replaced and integrated with the native shamanistic religion of Bone. In the 7th century, King Songsen Gampo and his two foreign queens were considered to be the first people to meditate in this hermitage site, and thus are considered the founders of Jayurpa Monastery. So you can see this door behind me. This is actually a very small entrance to a meditation cave. A monk could potentially have been in here up to even three years, just eating something very as simple as maybe a little bit of rice every day, which were brought to him by his disciples. In that time, before they had door frames and all that, they'd take the entrance to this cave and they'd pile up stones. They basically seal themselves in into the cave potentially for one year, two years, even three years, living in this tiny space that's, you know, maybe five square meters. No pillow, no blanket, no source of warmth, just basically a monk robe, and uh, that's it, a little bit of food and some scriptures. Thank you. 
So as you can see behind me, most of the, the uh, steps here, it's all quite paved. It's like concrete steps, so it's definitely not like a wild hike. But uh, the caves are really worth seeing. You can see some pilgrim ladies here behind me, here to offer butter into the meditation caves. And a lot of them will go into these caves, which are very small. You know, maybe the small is the size of a small, small bed. And uh, they'll, they'll actually rub the butter onto the walls of the cave as an offering to the various monks and lamas that meditated here. One of the highest cave complexes here. This is the cave complex dedicated to the future Buddha. And we're almost at the highest point in the whole monastery cave complex. It takes about probably two hours to walk around the whole thing. So this could be a half day or a full day of adventure, about an hour from Lhasa City, and definitely worth a day either before you're before you head out to Everest Base Camp or maybe a nice kind of relaxing day after Everest Base Camp. And that's how we did it. Behind me, down this path, is a little tonka wall. If you can see that little yellow building just over my shoulder here. Then there's a little steel tonka wall. Usually they're made out of stones, but once a year there's a festival where the monks will bring a sacred tonka, which is a, basically a religious painting of the Buddha. And it's a bit of a prophecy for the next year as far as what's going to be happening in the next year. They'll select the tonka specifically, and then they'll display it on this tonka wall down here just for one day of the year. And then they'll wrap it up and then put it back in the monastery. And then the next year, for that particular festival, they'll do the same thing again. There is a little restaurant here if you want to have lunch, which is nice. Get here in the morning, get here maybe 9 or 10 in the morning, walk around for two hours and then have lunch about 12 or 1, then head back to Lhasa. <laughs> 